Welcome everyone to this episode of Opening the Bean vodka series. Today we are with Dr. Alexandra Arrington. So Alexandra is a lecturer in Environment Law at Lancaster University Law School, and she serves as chair of the International Union for Conservation of Nature Task Force of Plastic Pollution. Thank you very much, Alexandra, for being here. Thank you so much, Martha, and thank you to all the listeners. It's a pleasure to be here. That is great. So, Alexandra, uh, how did you get interested in plastic pollution? So I think there are two answers to this. There's one that is the the very kind of professional, legal. Um, I've always been interested in environmental regulation and primarily climate for many years, climate and sustainability. Um, and as the issue of plastic pollution was becoming much more prevalent and there was discussion of having a treaty, um, I was asked if I would be interested in leading the task force, and I obviously said yes. It's because it's such a great issue to you know to really try to regulate and to make a difference in. Um, that's the professional side. The personal side is that um, I am a great also lover of nature and conservation. Um, and when I had the chance, actually during the end of COVID, the end of COVID, to take a holiday and went to the Bahamas. Um, I had a chance to do things like swim with sharks and be really interactive with marine wildlife. And then also see on beaches, plastic pollution, plastic bottles, etc. It was something that struck me well before any conversation about doing work in this area came up. It really struck me as something that needed to be regulated. And that was also very painful to see you know, when you think about things that you really care about um, being destroyed by human pollution. So they those two interests came together quite well. Um, but I always had this photo that I always carry with me of me holding a, a shark um, when I was in the Bahamas is kind of a just a, a reminder of what's really important and uh, and why we keep doing this work. So that's those are my two stories. <laughs> that is absolutely great. So um, can you give us a sneak peek of what's going on with the IUCN and the plastic treaty? Of course. So the IUCN is um, it's an intergovernmental organization. And so as part of the World's Commission on Environmental Law, which is a branch of the IUCN, um, heading up the, the task force that's looking at this, what we do is we provide um, guidance and support during the negotiations and also in the between times, which can actually be more intense and, and need a bit more effort even, um, to any country that's interested to the whole process, and specifically now actually to five West African countries um, that we have been grant funded to uh, to help and to assist. So Senegal, Sierra Leone, uh, Guinea-Bissau, Sao Tome and Principe, and uh, Cabo Verde. And so we actually get to help advise and answer questions for and work with the ministries and the negotiators for these countries, um, as well as anyone else who's interested in figuring out what the international law obligations are, what the potential impacts of the treaty will be, and how to get their voices and their goals put into the larger negotiation and discussion. That's absolutely fascinating, and it sounds so important right now, really. So um, thank you very much, Alexandra. Um, do you have a message or suggestion to researchers coming from your same disciplines who are appro approaching research regarding plastic pollution? Of course. Um, first of all, I, I want to say that in doing all this work, it is an honor. And, and something to remember always is that it is an honor to be involved in something like this. It's, it truly is. Um, it's very special. But I think for researchers in in law, especially or law and criminology, um, because there is a you know green criminology element to this as well. The thing to remember is that plastic pollution is not only an environmental issue. And we see this in the treaty negotiations, and we know this just from our own daily lives, as well as from understanding our legal disciplines. It is a human rights issue. It is a working and labor issue. Um, it's a trade issue. It is a national sovereignty issue. And so when we think about how to incorporate plastic pollution interests in our various sub-disciplines in law, it's important to remember that 
just because you work in human rights doesn't mean you can't work in pollution because indeed you really need to and you really should. And things like basic rights to human health are heavily impacted. And if you're a trade lawyer, there are actually a number of trade questions that have come up, some of which I've been working on, about how regulating something like plastic will impact on WTO regulations, et cetera. So don't feel like you have to be environmentally focused, I think, um, as a researcher to have an impact in this field because you absolutely don't. Um, there are many fields that will be affected and already are. So definitely you know, try to incorporate it in your research. You will find very rewarding paths. Thank you very much, Alexandra. These are very good suggestions and it's good to hear that there is already a network of researchers working on that. Um, so um, this is the end of our episode. Thank you very much for being with us and I will see you at uh, the panel uh, during the Opening the Bean uh, Tree conference. Uh, looking forward to that. Me too, Marta. Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs>